Let's talk a bit more about acute myeloid leukemia. Now, that's an illness that Bob Colimo bravely fought till the end. And in terms of definitions, let me give you that shortly. This is a type of cancer that starts in the bone marrow and affects the blood forming cells. You might be asking which cells in particular. And let me tell you a bit about that. It affects red blood cells, which transport oxygen from the lungs across the body. It affects the platelets that are crucial in helping your body to stop bleeding. It also affects the white blood cells that are responsible for fighting infections in the body. Now, what are some of the common risk factors that can affect or increase your chances of getting this disease? Now, you're most likely to suffer from this disease, one, as you get older. In addition, and some of you might be asking what age, no specifics from the information we were looking at, but in addition, it's more common in males than in females. The risk is increased if you're exposed to certain chemicals, such as benzene, which is used in the rubber and oil industry, and also the chemicals found in cigarette smoke. Being exposed to radiation is another risk, as well as having certain blood disorders or genetic syndromes as well. And finally, in terms of treatment, now the main treatment for acute myeloid leukemia, also known as AML, is chemotherapy, sometimes with a targeted therapy drug. This might be followed by a stem cell transplant, which is a procedure in which a patient receives healthy blood-forming cells to replace their own. And sometimes, as a last resort, not a major treatment, but this is sometimes used surgery and radiation therapy as well may be used in special circumstances. All right, now becoming the second CEO of Safaricom thrust Bob Colimo to a market described by his predecessor as peculiar. But nine years later, he would build a company loved and loathed at the same time, recording massive profits and literally returning value to shareholders. Faisal Ahmed looks back through the years that Colimo headed Safaricom. <laughs> When he assumed office at Safaricom headquarters, many doubted if Robert William Colimo could fit the shoes of his predecessor, Michael Joseph. Little was known of him and his surprise appointment to succeed Joseph, who had a good run building the telco from infancy in 1999 to one of the most respected brands in the region, elicited concerns. Was an aspect of respect. Taking over from a time Safaricom had a dip in earnings, this provided a springboard for loud echoes on his tenure, but he soon would turn the tides. His first order of business was to introduce a new management structure he termed at Safaricom 2.0 that was to elevate the telco to new realms. And years later, the results are all out, with Safaricom the most profitable company in the East African region. To respect his legacy of the company and what he has done in the last nine years, uh, Bob has taken this company from where it was when he arrived here in 2010 and took over from me. I think we have been very fortunate and lucky that Bob understood what Safaricom was all about, the, the DNA of Safaricom, and took it to another level. Um, can I take your name, your ID and your impasse balance? To his credit, Bob Colimo brought Safaricom to the fore of global financial technologies popularly known as fintech. Through his leadership, the globally famed money transfer service Mpesa grew by leaps and bounds, becoming the company's largest revenue earner to date. <laughs> Colimo also ensured the transfer of Mpesa servers previously domiciled in Germany in a campaign dubbed Bring Mpesa Home. This was not his only success. Colimo ensured Safaricom took root in Kenyans' homes, manifested around their transforming lives' clarion call. And only recently in March, Safaricom announced a special dividend payout of 24 billion shillings to shareholders. This on the backdrop of a record-breaking 63.4 billion shilling profit after tax. Because we're not a company that puts profit first. Despite some of the numbers you see today, we're a company that puts purpose first. And whoever takes this company over in the long term has to understand that and has to focus on that. But it was not all rosy for Colimo at the helm of Safaricom. In 2014, after the Westgate terror attack, Colimo was among the telco CEOs sought by police for failing to ensure SIM card registration. More recently, he has been in the eye of the storm from competitors who have insisted that Safaricom is a dominant player in the Kenyan market, a position he defended by insisting that Safaricom earned the position by the virtue of investments and innovation. At Safaricom House, employees paid a glowing tribute to their former boss, stating that Bob taught us that it was not impossible for a business to do good and be good. That profitability, purpose and a heart for people did not have to be mutually exclusive. He taught us that it was okay not to take ourselves too seriously. That there was nothing wrong with making mistakes as long as we learn from them. 
The company is expected to announce transition plans soon. We will be uh, giving the way forward, uh, hopefully later today or in the next uh, 24 hours. As curtains fall on the second CEO of the region's most profitable company, focus on his successor will be how best they deliver customer-centric service that characterized Bob Colimo's nine years at Safaricom. Faisal Ahmed, Citizen TV.